And a good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, General Manager at WEIU. Guests today in the studio are from the uh, Workforce Investment for LWIA. We're going to find out exactly what that is. Jamie Korda Hajawi. Hello. I got that right? I did. And a voice that some of you will recognize from the radio airways here at uh, WEIU, Mr. Nate Carlson returns. Good afternoon, Jeff. So I'm going to have you pull up a little closer to that mic here, Jamie. Yeah. So I guess what we'll do as we welcome you both to the airwaves today and as we're talking about you, uh, just talk a little bit about what exactly is the, the that you do and, and, and go through what the workforce development or workforce uh, innovation is. Yeah. Well, I will start out. I'm the director for LWIA 23, LWIA. I A 23. And what does that mean? Because it's just some <laughs> letters. Um, in academics, higher education, the corporate world, there's a ton of acronyms at any given moment, tons of jargon. We take it just a step further and we just blur all those letters together into a whole new word. So we say LWIA 23 and that's LWIA and it stands for Local Workforce Innovation Area. And that refers to do two different things. It's a geographical region of 13 counties in southern central Illinois, um, but it's also an entity. We are comprised of a workforce innovation board. Yeah. We're comprised of staff to that board. And then our service provider, um, CEFS, another set of letters <laughs> that I will there just <laughs> run together and you'll hear me call them CEFS a lot, but it's CEFS. Okay. Um, so what we do is we administer the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act grant. So again, we take that and make it WIOA, W-I-O-A. <laughs> WIOA, it's landmark legislation that's really geared at economic development for um, the United States. Um, it's designed to strengthen and improve our nation's public workforce system and help get Americans, including those with significant barriers to opportunities, into high quality jobs and careers, and to help employers hire and retain skilled workers. And it's through Lakeland College, correct? Lakeland College is the fiscal administrator. Um, Nate and I are employees of Lakeland College, but we serve an area that goes far beyond Lakeland's borders. Okay. We um, serve 6,500 square miles, um, looking at the 13 counties, if you think of Sullivan over to Paris, down to Lawrenceville, and then back over to Centralia and everything in between. Uh, just this massive geographical okay. region. And there are four of us. So as you can imagine, <laughs> it gets a little busy for us. <laughs> just, just a little bit, which is why we contract out some of our work to CEFS. They have uh, people on the ground throughout the region that um, can easily get out to individuals to, to implement some of our services. Um, the WIOA legislation, this act that allows us to go out and do this workforce development, it it comes from the Department of Labor. So these four these funds, as we call them our formula funds, come from the Department of Labor. It's federal grant money and it goes to each state. Illinois disperses it out to those individual local workforce innovation areas, those LWIAs. That's why we are LWIA 23. Fun fact, there are 22 Elwias in the state, and we're number 23. Um, so I think that makes us special. <laughs> I think so. Or somebody world. can't count. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. Um, no, there were about 27 at one point, and they consolidated down. So now we're number 23. And so Lakeland is our home base, but we do serve a uh, region beyond Lakeland's boundaries. We work with other training providers besides just Lakeland. We work closely with Kaskaskia College, Illinois Eastern Community Colleges, um, even EIU as well. Um, so we do this this workforce development in so many different ways. Um, Nate and I are going to talk about a lot of the services that we offer to businesses, but there's also a lot of services that are offered to individuals, to job seekers, and that's a lot of what our partner CEFS does. But um, I'll go into more what we do just for our local employers. Okay, it gives a good background on what Jamie does. Nate, what do you, I mean, do you do the same thing, or is it, is it very a little bit? So within uh, LWIA 23, uh, we serve our local businesses throughout the region, as Jamie said. And uh, my role specifically in that is as an apprenticeship navigator. And navigator is a fun word that was made up by an HR professional somewhere, and nobody really knows what it means. But essentially, it means that I'm a local workforce uh, analyst and apprenticeship consultant. Uh, so my job is to serve as a liaison between uh, local employers and the Department of Labor to uh, develop registered apprenticeship programs. 
Uh, I'm happy to kind of talk about what that looks like. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, when everybody hears the word apprenticeship, they probably think of like 1600s blacksmith or <laughs> Star Wars or trade labor. Uh, and, you know, they're, they kind of they cloud over and they go, That's, that couldn't possibly be for me. Uh, but what I've come to learn in my time as the apprenticeship navigator is that apprenticeships really are a contemporary workforce solution. Uh, essentially, an apprentice is anybody who is earning and learning. It's not an internship that's unpaid. Uh, it is someone who is being hired on by a business and they want to develop their talents and develop their knowledge uh, to succeed within that occupation, within that industry. So an apprentice goes to school, goes to a, a college, community college of some kind, and earns a credential at the same time as they are mastering their on-the-job skills. Uh, and they have an, a mentor that they're assigned to work with on the job. And so an apprentice is getting the best of the on-the-job learning and the best of the classroom learning at the same time. And so they're incredibly productive workers. Uh, and they also have show employers an increased retention rate because uh, the employer pays for that apprentice's education as a part of that apprenticeship. They sponsor them. Um, and so as we OWA, um, with our various grant funds we have available, we're able to throw some money uh, to the employers to kind of incentivize the employer to provide that opportunity. And what so kind of, I mean, go on, sorry. I was just wondering, like, what type of employers? When I think of a British ship, I think of electricians, plumbers. Mm -hmm. They hire on, you know, some people to, to learn the craft, and those people either get hired on at that company or they start their own company or go work for a, a, a likewise company. Is that, would that be a safe way to say it? So here's what I'll tell you, Jeff. There's over 1,300 occupations registered with the Department of Labor as being apprenticeable. Uh, <laughs> everything I always say from aviator to zoologist. I mean, we have a database that we can pull templates for paperwork from, basically. And I mean, the first, just on the first page, you have a 3D printing technician, you have actor, uh, you have agriculture. I mean, literally every industry uh, has an occupation that's apprenticeable. We haven't. We've been working since April with employees throughout our region and we haven't yet found a job that we couldn't develop an apprenticeship for. Wow. Um, so I always say, you know, people do tend to think of things like electrician and certainly they're absolutely wonderful programs for the trades and, and developing opportunities there. But something like an accountant or an office assistant or a paraprofessional educator, that's apprenticeable as well. And we're really excited to develop uh, opportunities there. When you work with businesses, I mean, is, is, I mean, do they come to you first or do you go out and kind of talk to major employers and say, hey, did you know this was available? How's that work? So we partner with uh, some of our local Chamber of Commerce's economic development organizations to kind of find businesses who are either hurting and kind of need LWEA services or just ones who are looking to like try something new in terms of how they do their outreach and onboarding. Uh, because apprenticeship really does offer an exciting opportunity to those employers because, you know, they're posting on Indeed and they're waiting six, seven months to fill a spot and then that person leaves in a month. And all the time and energy and money that went into hiring that individual just burned up in smoke. And so what we're able to offer through developing these apprenticeship programs is a means of recruiting and retention high-value, high-skill employees. Well, Jimmy, how does it work, though? Like, if someone is, a, I mean, is, if they're a student and they're, they're an employee, how does the hours the hours work? I mean, do they, do they still work a full, like, 40-hour week? Or is it part-time or is it full-time? Or do they kind of have to... Yeah, so in apprenticeships, Nate can probably speak on that more uh, for um, as far as apprenticeships specifically, those registered apprenticeships. But just in general, we do help students um, who are enrolled in, in career and technical education programs and at the same time helping them find jobs or find some sort of opportunities. And it's really um, based on those individual needs. Do they need something that's just a few hours a week? Do they need something a little bit more because they have a family to support? Um, we take an equity-based approach to all of our case management with our individuals. Um, CEFS is so good about really meeting that individual where they're at and assessing what their gaps, what their bound uh, barriers are, and the best way to overcome those obstacles. So it's it can unofficial apprenticeships can look however you want them to look. Looking at very specific planned out official registered apprenticeships, can you elaborate more? Nate? Yeah, take us through like the process. If I'm, if I, I'm, I'm a Lakeland student and I want to be whatever, how, how do I you know work through this thing? So it depends on the occupation. Um, something like a CNA apprentice, for instance, we could front load all of the coursework for that program. So they would do all of their hours of CNA classes, take their exam, uh, and then they would move into the on the job. A lot of the times we kind of 
make it like half and half. Um, specifically at Lakeland, a lot of programs have moved to make their programs only two days a week uh, to like, kind of accommodate employers who want to provide apprenticeship or just skills training options for their employees so that an individual could be you know, working full time uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and taking classes Tuesday, Thursday, and that's how they get uh, to their you know full time hours. Other employers will pay for the hours apprentices spend in the classroom for you know a semester or or, or however long as it takes. Um, apprentices don't necessarily have to take full time course loads. So if they're working towards a certificate program of some kind, they can take two classes one semester, two classes another semester. Uh, we can really customize it to fit the needs of the employer. Neat. Oh, this seems to me that there's a lot of people that need work right now so what are you finding out there in the in the that, that what what in terms of what's needed right what are you seeing right now that, that, that is are there people that are coming to you or businesses that are coming to you mostly uh, it's, it's, it's so my, my role largely serves employers in terms of developing these programs uh, and Seth services individuals who would be looking for an apprenticeship uh, what I'll say is on the on the employer side a lot of what they're seeing is that you know applicants or, or local employees are interested in seeing a greater degree of transparency in terms of the hiring process what am I going to be making what are my responsibilities going to be what sort of opportunities do I have for career development within your organization and apprenticeship lays all that out. The apprentice knows going in, here's what's expected of me, here's what I'm going to be making when I start, when I finish, here's here's the degree or uh, credential that I'm going to earn, uh, here's a path for me for upskilling and moving into higher positions within this organization. And so it provides that transparency. It's, it's kind of like a paid internship in a way. Do you find that a lot of the people that do this end up staying at the company that they apprenticed with? Oh, yes. DOL says there's a, there's a 97% I was retention ask rate. Numbers, yeah. yeah, and 97 retention rate for up to three years following completion of a program. And I'll tell you, it's not like it used to be where individuals would stay on with the same company for 30 years. Nowadays, you hire somebody on, and week two, they've got you know Indeed.com pulled up in the next browser <laughs> tab. So three years following completion of potentially a two- or three-year program that's huge just in terms of retaining that employee for that long but also by providing an apprentice with that opportunity you're paying for their education you're giving them this one-to-one -one mentorship um, you're investing in them on a level that it's going to be much harder for them to leave uh, you know it's much easier uh, to stick out the tough week when you know hey at the end of this i'm going to have that journey worker credential i'm going to be making a competitive pay rate uh, in a very successful occupation uh whereas compared to if you don't know if you have a future there uh when times get tough you're more likely to say okay i'm out it's <laughs> a good answer one of the things that we're hearing from hr professionals is that um the employees that are sticking with them longer are the ones that are being treated as humans. Imagine that, where uh, the business is actually looking at not just what skills do you have that you can bring to me and are you showing up on time, but how can we help you? You're not coming to work this day, your child's sick, you're, what's going on? Is there anything that we can do for you? Oh, your daycare center is shut down. Well, we have these other options we can help you out with. So as there's these more holistic supports and wraparound services available for um, job seekers and employees, that's really addressing that problem of we have those people just in and out and that constant turnover. Um, and we're really seeing that uh, having the case management from CEFS, those individuals are checking in with um, their case managers regularly and there's there's this extra level or layer of accountability in there so that um, maybe they haven't had the best um, example set for them in their lives maybe they're kind of just on their own figuring things out but now they have a trained professional who's really taking the time to help them understand this is what's expected of you this is um, what you need to be doing to achieve this goal and this is putting you down on the wrong path let's get back yeah. on the right path so through apprenticeships and just any of our other um, business services and services to individuals, we're seeing that it does make, it makes a difference. If a business out there is listening to this today or watching this today and they want to reach out, is it, do they go through you or they go through the chamber or what's the best way for them to contact? To uh, if they have a good relationship with their chamber, definitely reach out to them. If they just really want to talk to me and Nate, they can reach out to us directly. Um, we do have a website, www.lwa23.net. 
Okay, well, and we'll, we'll go over that again at the end in case anybody wants to write down or get the number. Um, Nate, you, Nate and, and Jamie, you both cover a big area. Is a lot of it on the phone, or do you have to get out there and, and have, have boots on the ground and, and meet with employers on, on their locations, or how does that work? I hit the road. I mean, my job is to work with employers, and we really make an effort. I always say, I'll do a Zoom if they really want, but I much prefer to, like, go out into the community, get a sense of what their company culture is like, uh, so that I'm more able to specifically fit the needs of their program as we develop these apprenticeships um, because every employer is going to be different. I can I can download a template about an occupation from the DOL, but that's not necessarily going to be what an employer needs. It's not going to reflect uh, their values, not going to reflect what their company culture looks like. And so by going directly to employers, uh, we're really able to provide a much more hands-on approach. How many uh, places do you go, like average week, month? I mean, you, you, um, it depends. Uh, so I, I know COVID messed everything up, right. but... Uh, of a five-day work week, usually at least two or three days I'm on the road the entire day and that could be going anywhere from Centralia uh, you know up to Marshall in our Paris uh, you know down and over to Lawrenceville I mean it could be anywhere it's just where the employer need is uh, I'm gonna be there how about you, Jamie? On a, on a typical day, are you are you out there a lot, or do you or are you more in house? I'm more in house, but I love those days where I can get out of the office and just <laughs> get away from the administrative work. Um, and I really do like to go down to the the southern region of our district because it's such a good change of pace. And I also want people to understand we might be uh, housed at Lakeland and in Mattoon, but we serve the entire region equally. So I am more than happy to hop in the car for quite a while to head down to Olney or Flora, check things out. And I love to do tours of the businesses. I like to see the pride of those those managers, those owners, um, whoever it is I'm talking to, see what they're actually doing, um, learn all the skills that are involved. I go to a lot of manufacturing plants and I always think it's going to be dirty there. It's going to be hot. I'm going to get sweaty. No, some of these factories and facilities are super clean. They're climate controlled and they're using so much new innovative technology. It's my it looks like an Apple store. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's insane. That's pretty cool. Um, strengthening the economy is a big thing that you, when you sent me a note, is how do you think the best way that you're, what you do helps strengthen the economy here in Central Illinois? We get more people to work and we get them the skills they need to get the jobs they need to be sustained, self-sustainable. They don't need to rely on welfare or government assistance programs so much. Um, the more people we have working, the more money we have being spent. So, um, and we just really need to have a skilled workforce. One of the other things we hear from HR is, yeah, there's a ton of entry level candidates available for jobs right now, but they're really missing that mid-level skill. So if we can get individuals who are already working into a program to get them upskilled, whether that's through incumbent worker training or an apprenticeship, then they're able to better provide for their families, have more fun, and contribute to the local economies. And, and speaking of that upskilling, let me tell you something very exciting that we provide that goes hand in hand with apprenticeships. Um, we mentioned that we have these formula funds, these grant funds that are available to us. And one of those, as Jamie mentioned, is called incumbent worker training funds. And so what these are is we can spend up to $20,000 per company per fiscal year to reimburse them for putting an employee through training that upskills them. So what that means is let's say you've got a mid-level position for an account executive or a sales position that you can't find somebody for, for an accountant position, but you have, you know, an entry-level uh, custodian or somebody uh, who really has that drive, but they don't have the credentials to do that mid-level role. We will reimburse up to $20,000 of you sending that individual to Lakeland College or EIU to get them that credential so that you can move them into that mid-level role. There's some tax credit available, right? Yes. Let's talk uh, about that. Additionally, additionally, if they are registered as an apprentice for each active apprenticeship an employer has per year they'll receive a thirty five hundred to five thousand dollar tax credit that's in addition to that money that we can spend on the incumbent worker training and uh, slash or uh, <laughs> if an individual is facing economic barriers that would make them eligible for SEF services uh, if they're uh, if they've been on uh, EBT uh, or, or unemployment if they're a veteran or the spouse of a veteran or they're aged out of foster care uh, we may be able to reimburse up to seven 75% of that apprentice's wages for their first year of employment. Any rules on how many uh, apprentices a company can have? I mean, no. is there a max? <laughs> no. We the, So the cap for those that incumbent worker training funds is $20,000 per company per year. But yeah. in terms of those tax credits, I mean, you could have 20. 
you could have 20 apprentices and the apprentice uh, employer is making up to five thousand dollars in tax credits that's enough to cover a certificate program at lakeland so not only are they gaining that that worker who has that classroom knowledge and best on the job experience uh they're doing so at a pretty a neutral cost um in, the, in doing this job at Lakeland, or through, through Lakeland for what you do, what's the most surprising thing you've learned so far, both of you, if you can answer? Oh, I've learned so much, and I continue to learn new things every day. Um, I think, for me, maybe it's not necessarily learning, but it's seeing those success stories and seeing those individuals who, who they were facing some really intense struggles, that their life has been an uphill battle, and they really didn't think they were ever going to have the opportunity to better them their positions. And um, just to see the gratitude they have when they come back um, and say, like, because of your support, because of these funds, because of you helping me get these things that I needed, I was able to complete a program, get into a good job, and now, like, I can do all this extra stuff with my kids. We get to go on vacation. I've never had a vacation before. I heard someone, uh, like, got a fancy refrigerator, and, like, they were, they were thrilled about it. It's just really cool to see that we are changing lives. We're making an impact and um, just the gratitude out there. Absolutely. What have you learned or have been surprised from late, Nate? Uh, and so part of, you know, hitting the ground, going out to all these businesses, doing these, you know, tours of facilities, uh, you know, so I grew up in the suburbs and I, I was so unaware of all the different industries and occupations that we have right here in central Illinois. I mean, it's incredible. And I think so many of the, you know, the kids that grow up here don't realize it either. Like, I didn't know what an industrial maintenance technician did. <laughs> I didn't know what, uh, you know, a day in one of our manufacturing, uh, local manufacturers looked like. I, I didn't realize all these opportunities that exist here. And I think that's, that's the case for so many people who do grow up here. Uh, and they think that, well, in order to be successful, I've got to leave. And I think one of the things that apprenticeship pose a really important opportunity to our local businesses and communities is showing individuals that no, you can make you know a pretty substantial salary and do it right here where cost of living is much lower than it's going to be in a metropolitan area you can you can have this career you can gain that credential right here at Eastern or Lakeland or, or SIU or wherever uh, and and be that successful um, but it's so much of it is that individuals don't know those opportunities exist. And so one of the things we've been doing is, is creating partnerships with institutions like Lyft and Mattoon uh, to take our local you know, high school students, even middle school students, and show them what opportunities exist for them right here. And you read my mind next. I want to, I want to talk about Lyft, which is scheduled to open one in just a couple weeks, right? Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. talk about your partnership with them and, and what, what people can do to be involved and what you think about Lyft in general. Absolutely. So Lyft is a really exciting opportunity for for. Uh, you know, education for high school students to prepare them for the, the career field. And uh, in terms of apprenticeships, uh, there's a really exciting opportunity we have called Youth Apprenticeships. Now, everything I talked about apprenticeships so far, the employer sponsors, they get the tax credit, there's all sorts of funding mechanisms they can receive. We can do that for a high school student. They can start out as an apprentice when they're 17 years old, take their coursework at Lyft, move directly into certificate or degree program at Lakeland or Eastern, uh, and be hired on as a journey worker by the time they're 19, 20 years old. And that's really exciting because what that means is uh, you've created a direct pathway to this really uh, meaningful, substantial employment for those students. And Lyft is a huge part of that. I mean, exposing uh, those students to uh, such these uh, processes and getting them those hands-on skills uh, uh, is incredibly valuable. Uh, additionally, we have uh, a model called pre-apprenticeship, which is more, you know, attuned to something like an internship, uh, where an employer could sponsor a student at Lyft uh, and then hire them on as an apprentice. Uh, so there's all sorts of ways uh, through the partnership between Lyft and LWA 23 for students to receive sponsorship for their tuition at Lyft, for employers to hire directly from Lyft, uh, and there's a lot of exciting possibilities there. And in blatant self-promotion, Christy Hild and some of the people from Mattoon <laughs> will be here next week, as I remember. Absolutely. So. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we've got a few minutes left today. Uh, we're talking with uh, Jamie Corda. Hajawi. Hajawi, you got and it. Nate Carlson, former hit mixer himself here mm -hmm. um, from the workforce uh, and uh, director of workforce investments. Uh, I guess based out of Mattoon is the easiest way to say it. Is there any? Is there a favorite place you love to go? Like, is, you love to go to North America Lighting, or you love to go to, I don't know, Craft, you know, it's Mars and Mattoon. Is there a place that you just love to go when they when they call you in and say, we, hey, we've got an idea for? What, what I'll tell you is North American Lighting has been an amazing leader 
in the area for apprenticeships. I mean, they have programs where they're putting people through four-year engineering degree programs as apprentices. I mean, they're at the point where, you know, even if, even if you know, they've maxed out the funding we can give them, they'll say, oh, no, we're doing this because we see the ROI for us. And by the way, the ROI for apprenticeships is $1.50 on the dollar. It is a substantially worthwhile investment. So, you know, you said NAL, and I know I lit up because yeah. they are they're absolutely an A-plus star student of apprenticeships. Uh, We've been working with a lot of great partners locally lately. Uh, Three Sisters Logistics in Teutopolis. Uh, Leslie Tarble there has been working with us on a construction driver program that's really exciting. Uh, we've been working with the Equity out of Effingham on a number of programs, like five or six different programs there. Uh, and they've just had a really exciting energy of wanting to provide these opportunities to our local students. Um, and like I said, just every new place I get to go is, is a lot of fun. But I also like you know working with our local chambers. You know, even employers at, at chamber meetings who aren't necessarily looking at this time to develop apprenticeships, just hearing from their perspectives. And usually I get free lunch, which can't be beat. Uh, so it, really, it's just any time I get to go on a field trip, I'm going to be excited about it. Yeah. That is true. Hey, like um, I have to echo what you said about the the um, economic development organizations. I like it's kind of you meet with one person, but then you get tentacles out to so many more local businesses. Um, case in point is Courtney Yonke with the Effingham Regional Growth Alliance. Every time I meet with him he takes me to visit three to five businesses in a day and we get out there I see some really cool stuff I would not normally see um, I I learn so much it's exciting it's fast-paced and because these businesses have such a strong relationship rapport and trust in Courtney already they are more likely to follow up and to take advantage of the Absolutely. services yeah. that we offer because when we cold call and we say hello we have free money for you would you like it everyone's like oh I don't know about this <laughs> for good reason I understand but when um, we can make connections through someone that already has that rapport there it's so much more useful it's more um, advantageous for those employers that they're getting a really good service they might normally kind of like second guess so we didn't have left contact information so if people want to out there want to get a hold of either of you or yeah. it's best to go to the website then website lwa23.net you can email us lwia23 at lakelandcollege.edu um That's you good. check us out on our social medias just Absolutely. look at, at lwia23 all right you want to have some fun rapid fire questions last minute sounds good all right, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll go jamie nate all right did you go to the coast county fair yes or no no yes all right Hobby. Do you have a hobby? Sleeping. Watching TV. <laughs> uh, your college mascot was? Uh, the Panthers. Uh, Panthers. Uh, uh, t type of music you love most? Oh, French rap. French rap. Yeah, I would, I know. That would have never. Broadway show tunes. Broadway <laughs> show tunes. All right. Your first car. Name and color. If you are making. Uh, Kia Spectra 05 Silver. Beige Honda Accord, and I miss it every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you like better, when you Indy, St. Louis, or Chicago, since we're kind of here in the middle? Oh, I love Chicago. I'm Chicago suburb born, and I love it. There you go. Um, would you parachute? Yes, in a heartbeat. Skydive? Absolutely. You would. I was so surprised. Your favorite technology, what are you, what are you addicted to the most? Oh, that phone. phone. My iPhone. Yeah. All right. Very good. So I appreciate you both coming in. Nate, good seeing you again. Absolutely. Oh, my friend. Thanks for nice us. to meet you, Jamie. Nice to meet you. So, so again, real quickly, that website is? LWA23.net. Thank you so much. And we'll have Christy Hild from Mattoon and some of the other people from Mattoon Schools next week. We are WEIU. Everybody have a great day.